And finally, the last method that is used in establishing the initial basic feasible solution, that would be the Vogel's approximation method or VAM. It is an algorithm that finds an initial feasible solution to a transportation problem by considering the penalty cost of not using the cheapest available rates. Now, in order for us to better understand this, let me show you an example. Now, this example is quite, diff uh, quite similar, rather, to our previous methods. So, we also have three different sources. So, with respect to this source column, we have uh, first source, second, and third source. And we also have four destinations. So at this point, we have destination denoted with point A, point B, point C, and point D, respectively. We also have our column for our supply in terms of pieces. And we also have row for our demand in terms of pieces. And as you can notice, this is also an example of a balanced transportation problem because your total supply equals your total demand. Now, for Vogel's approximation method, in order to do this, we need to strictly follow the different steps. Now, let's discuss first step number one. Now, in step number one, it says, for each row with an available supply, each column with an unfilled demand, calculate an opportunity or penalty cost by subtracting the smallest entry from the second smallest entry for minimization problem. Now, as you can notice, we have what we call row difference, and we also have what we call column difference. Now, in this case, for step number one, we will do the row difference first. So, in doing the row difference, we need to identify the, the amount with the least cost. So, in terms of row one or source one rather so the least cost is six and once we had already identified our least cost we need also to identify the second least cost now in this instance we have six as the least cost and the second least cost is eight so therefore eight minus six that will be two okay that's two and for the second row our least cost is 7 and our second least cost is 10. So 10 minus 7, we got a difference of 3. For the third row, our least cost is 7 and our second least cost is 8. So therefore, our difference is 1. And finally, we are done with row difference. And right now, we will go to our column difference. So in terms of column A, our least cost is 7 and our second least cost is 8. So 8 minus 7, we have a difference of 1. In terms of column B, we have least cost of 6 followed by 8. So 8 minus 6, that would be 2. For column C, we have 8 as the least cost followed by 10. So 10 minus 8, we have 2. And for the last column, the least cost is 7 followed by 9. So 9 minus 7 is 2. Okay, that's step number 1. Now, what's step number 2? So for step number 2, we need to identify the row or column with the largest opportunity or penalty cost. Now, as you can notice here, Based on our row difference and column difference, we need to select the one with the largest value. So the largest value is 3. And therefore, this 3 right here is under our row 2, right? This is under row 2. Now, since this is under row 2, we need to find, okay, uh, let's read first step number 3. For step number 3, we need to allocate the maximum amount possible to the available route with the lowest cost. So therefore, in step number three, we need to identify the lowest cost under row two. So the lowest cost is seven. 
right? So therefore, this is where I will be doing my first allocation. And in doing so, I need to match the quantity of my demand versus the quantity of my supply. Now, with respect to my sell source to destination A, so the quantity of my demand is 325 and the quantity of my supply is 500. And therefore, since 325 is the least value, then I will be using this one for my allocation. So 325 minus 3 to 5, this becomes 0. And 500 minus 3 to 5, this becomes 175. Now, since this has been satisfied already, this has been exhausted, therefore, we are now able to cancel the entire column. Okay, we will be marking that out because we will no longer be um, making use of that column. Now, since we have marked that out already, we are now left with three columns. We have columns B, C, and D. And the next step that we need to do is to uh, follow steps one and two. So we need to do the row difference and column difference again. So with respect to row one, my least cost is six followed by nine. So therefore, nine minus six, my difference is three. With respect to my row two, my least cost is 10 followed by 11. So therefore, my difference is 1. Okay. And next, with respect to row 3, my least cost is 7 followed by 8. So therefore, my difference is 1. Okay, that's with respect to row difference. What about in column different? Now, for column different... Since this has been cancelled out or marked out already, uh, we will just simply put hyphen, okay, because this is no longer applicable. So in terms of column B, my least cost is 6 followed by 8, so therefore my difference is 2. And with respect to column C, my least cost is 8 followed by 10, so therefore um, I have 2 as my difference. And with respect to my column D, my least cost is 7 followed by 9. So therefore, my difference is 2. And again, we will need to select uh, the value that is considered as the largest. So in this case, our largest value is 3. And 3 is under what row? It's under row 1. So since it's under row 1, um, we need to select the cell that has the least cost. And that would be this cell because it has the least cost. So therefore, I will be doing my next allocation right here. And in doing so, I need to uh, match again the quantity of my demand versus the quantity of my supply. In this case, my supply is 400 and my demand is 425. And therefore... I will be allocating in 400 since this has the least value, okay? So, I will be plugging in 400. Therefore, 400 minus 400, this becomes 0, okay? This will be zeroed out. And 425 minus 400, this becomes 25, Okay, now since this has been zeroed out already or exhausted, we can now finally mark this out. Okay, we will no longer be using this row. By marking that out, we are now left with these cells. Okay, we have cells 11, 10, 14, 8, 8, and 7. Now, we will do with the uh, previous steps. So, we need to do the row difference again and the column difference now, at this point, in here, this is no longer applicable. So, just put in hyphen because this is already marked out. With respect to my row 2, my least cost is 10 followed by 11 and therefore my difference is 1. And with respect to my row 3, my least value is 7 and followed by 8 and therefore my difference is 1.
And moving on to column difference. So with respect to my column A, that's no longer applicable. For column B, so my list is 8 followed by 11. So therefore, my difference is going to be 3. Okay, that's 3. For column C, that's 8 followed by 10. So therefore, my difference is 2. I have 7 and 14. So therefore, my difference is 7. And next step is we need to be able to select the largest value. And the largest value among our row and column difference, that would be 7. And 7 is under column D. So therefore, in column D, um, we will consider uh, these two cells, 14 and 7. And we need to select the cell that has the least cost value. And therefore, we will be doing our um, next allocation right here because 7 has the lowest value. Okay? So in doing my allocation, again, I will be matching the quantity of my demand versus my supply. So with respect to my selected cell, the quantity of my demand is 276 and the quantity of my supply is 600. So therefore, I will be plugging in 275 right here because this has the least value. So 275 minus 275, uh, this becomes zero. It will be zeroed out. And 600 minus 275, so that becomes 325. Okay, that's 3, 2, 5. Okay, now since this has been exhausted already, then we are now able to mark this out, mark this entire column as we will no longer be using this column. So since we have marked that out, we are now left with four cells, 11, 8, 10, 8. So we will now be doing again the row and column difference. So in terms of row 2, so I have 10 and 11, so therefore my difference is 1. Okay, in terms of this row, 8 and 8, I have 0 or null. And in terms of column B, 8 and 11, so therefore I have 3. And in terms of column C, I have 8 and 10, so therefore my difference is 2. So looking at the information, uh, the one that has the largest value is 3. And 3 is under column B. So therefore, we will be uh, focusing our attention on these cells, 8 and 11. And for these particular cells, 8 is considered to be having the least value. So we will do our next allocation here. And in doing so, we need to match the quantity of our demand and our supply. So in this case, our demand is 25 and our supply is 3 to 5. So therefore, I will be allocating the one with the least value, 25. So 25 minus 2, 5, this becomes 0. And 3 to 5 minus 25, this becomes 300. Okay? So since this has been exhausted already, therefore, I am now able to cancel out this entire column and right now i am left with two cells i have eight and i have ten okay in terms of uh these columns this is the least value so i will be doing my next allocation here and matching the demand and supply i have 475 and 300 300 has the least value and so i will be plugging this amount right here so this becomes zero and 475 minus 300 this becomes 175 and since this has been exhausted already therefore i can now cancel out this cell and i am now left with the last one so we will do our last allocation here and as you can notice um, both the quantity of our demand and supply are the same so we will be copying that amount right here and both will become zero okay and it will be cancelled out 
Okay, that is how we do Vogel's approximation method. And this time, we will now be computing the value of our total cost, and that would be total cost is equal to 400 times 6 plus 325 times 7 plus 175 times 10 plus 25 times 8 plus 300 times 8 And finally, 275 times 7. Okay, in this case, our total cost for this particular problem, that would be 10950 dollars. Okay, this will be our answer.